Hello. Today I'll give you an intuitive feel of what stimulated Raman scattering is. The biggest thing is, it's the stimulated version of spontaneous Raman scattering. Usually when people say Raman scattering, they mean spontaneous, and stimulated is different. So in general, when people draw out what the Raman process looks like, they draw a virtual state, and two excited states, V equals zero and V equals one. And this is the virtual state. And in Raman, you have, say, a laser coming in at some frequency omega one, and then there's a downward transition omega two, and you detect the difference between those as the frequency of the vibration, omega v. So omega v equals omega 1 minus omega 2. And this would be Stokes, Raman. So now let's compare this with what a diagram of fluorescence looks like. So in fluorescence, you have an excited electronic state. And you have a ground you have a ground electronic state. And within that ground electronic state, you have vibrational levels. So say we have the same vibrational levels. Well, V equals zero would be this very bottom line, and then V equals one would be this one, and I guess V equals two would be this one. We're not showing that up here. So in fluorescence, fluorescence is absorption. Say so you send in a laser of omega one. Your molecule absorbs omega one, <laughs> sits there for a little bit, and then emits omega-2 and you detect omega-2 so up here is Raman this is the Raman process down here is fluorescence so now <clears throat> you look at these diagrams and doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that well, these wraps look pretty dang similar, don't they? <laughs> so let's talk about the similarities and the differences between these graphs. Okay, so we'll start with similarities. So, some things that are similar between these two, omega ones provided by us. Whereas on the other hand, omega two is not provided by us, it is emitted. So omega-1 interacts with the material, and then out comes omega-2 from the interaction. Okay, and in both cases, we usually start in the ground electronic state, and the ground vibrational state of that. So you might think of that as n equals zero, v equals zero. And we usually end up in a vibrationally excited state. So we end up in a vibrationally excited state, that's what I mean by V is not equal to zero at the end. And kind of along the same lines as the second point here, omega-2 is emitted. Okay, so now what are some differences? This is where things will get interesting. <laughs> some differences are in the fluorescence case, omega-1 is actually absorbed. <laughs> but in the Raman case, omega-1 is not absorbed. Okay, so <laughs> fluorescence, omega-1 is absorbed. So omega-1 brings an electron from the ground state to the excited state, and the electron sort of 
decides in some sort of way um, that it's going to come back down to the ground state and end up in a vibrationally excited state. Or it could not be in a ground vibrate. It could also end up in the ground vibrational state too. But uh, more than likely it'll be one of the excited vibrational states. And then in Raman, Omega-1 doesn't actually bring the electron to the virtual state. Another thing is, I won't write this one down though, it's an experimental observation. Um, well, and you can explain it, but it's a little deeper than what I'm going to discuss here. But fluorescence usually gives you a lot wider bands than Raman does. And so, like I said earlier, in fluorescence, Omega-2 brings... No, Omega-1 brings an electron up to the excited state. And then that electron decides, sort of, decides to come back down or to relax after order of time nanoseconds whereas in Raman Omega 2 doesn't actually bring the electron up or it doesn't excite the electron And we say it doesn't actually bring it to the virtual state because no one's actually observed it there. And, I mean, we've tried to observe it there down to like the femtosecond time scale, but it's not possible. So it might lie there for attoseconds, which is 10 to the negative 18 seconds, which is a lot, 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 lot faster than nanoseconds. Um, if you square the exponent, in nanoseconds, you'll get the attoseconds. So, nanosecond 10 to the negative 9 seconds. Attoseconds 10 to the negative 19. So, a lot, lot faster. Okay, and then finally, the big part. Another similarity between the two. Omega-2 is spontaneously emitted. Because we did not provide Omega-2. Omega-2 was provided to us. But actually, we can stimulate the emission of Omega-2 by providing an electric field with a frequency omega-2. So we would actually provide two electric fields, one with omega-1 and one with omega-2. So uh, if we're thinking about fluorescence, we can stimulate the emission of the photon of omega-2 And that's how lasers work, essentially. So it's stimulated emission versus spontaneous emission. It's essentially, so you have an electron down here. I'll just draw it like that. You bring in a photon, omega-1, and then sometime later it's excited. And then if we don't touch it, nanoseconds later it's going to decay and emit omega-2. Then be back down here after nanoseconds. But if we are here again, so the electron's excited, and we bring in omega-2 right now, 
well then that's going to go right down it immediately and we're going to get our original omega 2 out plus we're going to get this difference in energy out which is also omega 2 so we got two photons from one because the difference in energy of the excited electron and we got two photons now imagine the, these two go do two more processes like this and that's how light is amplified by stimulated emission and that's what laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation okay well we can also stimulate the emission of omega-2 in the Raman case and that is what stimulated Raman scattering is okay so why is stimulated Raman scattering so important <laughs> well It's, it's because it's millions of times more signal than in spontaneous Raman. And sort of thinking about absorption followed by fluorescence, you can think about fluorescent lights. So fluorescent lights aren't super intense, um, and there's spontaneous emission happening, happening in fluorescent lights. Whereas in a laser, there's stimulated emission happening. And lasers are way, way more intense than fluorescent lights. And the same thing happens with Raman scattering. Raman scattering's a pretty weak process. But if you want to stimulate the Raman process, you're going to gain about a million times better signal. So about a million times better signal in stimulated Raman scattering, which I'll abbreviate SRS, than in spontaneous Raman scattering. And when people usually say Raman spectroscopy without specifying spontaneous or stimulated, well, they usually mean spontaneous. If somebody's talking about stimulated Raman spectroscopy, they're going to say the stimulated part, or they're going to say SRS. So if they write SRS, that the first S stands for stimulated, not spontaneous. Okay, so I hope that gives you an intuition of what stimulated Raman is. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.